We welcome you to the House of the Lord here at St. John for this, the 29th of November, which is the first Sunday of Advent. Who are we? What are we about? We are St. John's, growing in Jesus and spreading his saving grace. And we have a Bible verse for this month. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead. Well, the Board of Elders had some big plans for today. They had hoped that we would be in worship today all together. And we were going to do a little thank you to all the volunteers. We kind of added up all the people that volunteer from greeters and ushers and committee members and those that are on our clean teams and all the rest. And we came up with about 85 or so people, all ready and willing to work together in volunteering here at church. But unfortunately, COVID kind of put a kibosh on that. Uh, we hope to be able to do something yet, but we did want to recognize all the volunteers. Pat yourself on the back as we give glory to God for the blessing of the gifts that he gives to us. The sort of service that we follow, you received either an email or mail, and uh, you needed to follow along in the service today. If you'd like to be added to our email or mail list, uh, give us a call at the church office or send us an email to that effect. These being the announcements for the day, we do join in the first hymn. Lift up your heads, ye mighty gates, and may the Lord bless our time in his house today.
the sun to its setting. The name of the Lord is to be praised. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God shines forth. Our God shall come. He does not keep silence. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. Shower, O heavens, from above, and let the skies rain down righteousness. Let the earth open that salvation may spread forth. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and it will be forever. Amen. Be not so terribly angry, O Lord, and remember 
not iniquity forever. Behold, please look, we are all your people. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. The epistle lesson is from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, Thanksgiving. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that was given you in Christ Jesus. That in every way you were enriched in him, in all speech and all knowledge, even as the testimony about Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will sustain you to the end, guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, by whom you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If we turn our attention to the Holy Gospel, the Gospel of St. Mark, the 11th chapter, as we read about the triumphal entry. When they drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village in front of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find a colt tied, on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it. And if anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Say, The Lord has need of it, and he will, and will send it back here immediately. And they went away and found a colt tied at the door outside in the street, and they untied it. And some of those standing there said to them, What are you doing, untying the colt? And they told him what Jesus had said, and they let them go. <coughs> and they brought the colt to Jesus, and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. And many spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut from the fields. And those who went before and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch. This, this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord, Lord is our righteousness. He shall reign as king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. This is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. This is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Advent has a dual theme, both dealing with the coming of Jesus. First, of course, is the coming of Jesus at Christmas that we celebrate. The second theme is Jesus' coming at the end of time. And for both those comings of Jesus, we consider our sinfulness, why he came, and what he came to overcome. The Ten Commandments point to our sin, for we see that we are not the perfect people that God calls us to be. Our sin offends our holy God, and we need his forgiveness. We recite the Ten Commandments and consider our unworthiness. You shall have no other gods. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his manservant or maidservant, his ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. But in the Apostles' Creed, we read about the great things that God has done. He not only has created us, he has also saved us because of Jesus, who died for our sin, 
and is raised again in victory. And the Holy Spirit plants that gift of faith in our hearts. We remind ourselves of the great things God has done, the things that we believe in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the blessing. Amen. Believing Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we are privileged to join with him in prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We welcome Mrs. Baker forward for the children's lesson today. Good morning. Good morning. What a glorious time we have here to share some important news. I want to read again some of the words that Tom read a few minutes ago. It comes from Isaiah. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. You, we are the clay, you are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. So, I thought I would... Um, Maybe you like to play with Play-Doh or clay. I actually wanted some um, modeling clay, but modeling clay is kind of hard to find these days when you're on a tight schedule. It's so very surprising. So I found some um, Play-Doh, and um, I'm thinking, what are some things that you can make with modeling clay or with Play-Doh? An ashtray? An ashtray, oh yeah. We could make an ashtray. Hopefully in this day and age we don't have too many people that need ashtrays anymore. Maybe we can make something really intricate. Maybe we could make a whole army of people. Maybe we could make something that's a little bit easier, like our Bible verses we're talking about. Maybe a pot of some kind. As you can see from this, I'm not a very good potter, am I? It takes a lot of work to make something really good. But I brought this along. Isn't this a gorgeous piece of pottery? This was actually made, I was trying to figure out what year this was made. And it says, I think on the bottom it says 71. But my, me my memory tells me I was a lot younger than that when I made this gorgeous lovely vase that isn't very well shaped it's pretty uneven and if you could actually see it it's really kind of bumpy it's not smooth like a regular potter would have done and I bring this as an example because those Bible words that Tom talked about um, talk about how gracious God is he takes us as lumps of clay and forms us into gorgeous, beautiful human beings. Maybe when we look in the mirror, we might not think that, but that's not how God looks at us. God looks at us as his creation, and he created us perfect in his sight. Just like him. He created us to be just like him. Sin, unfortunately, entered the world, but we have to give thanks as well that 
Besides that sin entering the world and making us not so pretty, not so perfect, that God saw that happening and he took care of that. He sent Jesus as a baby to live and die among us and to come back alive again so that we are forgiven for our sins. Proof that God loves us as the great potter able to make gorgeous things out of a lump of clay. We can remember that even though when we look in the mirror, we may not see perfection, God sees us perfection because he looks at us through his son who died and rose again for our sins. If you fold your hands, you can pray along with me. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your son to die for my sins so that I can be known and seen by you as a perfect lump of clay formed from dirt and living to your service. Help me to remember that I do live to your service and that I want to bring others to know you the way that I have the opportunity and the faith to know you. Help me to bring others so that they can understand and believe in your forgiveness so that one day we will all be able to sing your praises for eternity in heaven. In your precious name we pray, amen. And with that, we'll sing the words of the next hymn, Hosanna, love, Hosanna.
be seated. Well, are you ready for Christmas? You know, that's the question that's going to come up again and again and again until the day finally arrives. It's a great question. And it provides us an opportunity as God's people to bring Jesus into the conversation. This is Advent, after all. And Advent has that twin theme of being ready. Ready for the celebration of Jesus' first coming into the world as that tiny baby in Bethlehem. And ready for his coming again at the end of time as judge and king. So, are you ready for Christmas is really only half the question. The possible response, you know, Jesus came, thank God, to take away our sins. But the real question is, are we ready for him to come at the end of time? That's the more pressing question, it seems to me. We are thankful that God is Faithful. In Him we have forgiveness and salvation. In fact, His faithfulness is legendary. Well, let's do something a little different today. Let's play a little game. I'll describe something or someone with hopefully a one or two word answer. You can maybe respond. Sort of like word association. And this will work much better if you who are watching this video will also play along. You ready? Let's start with sports. Mike Ditka. Chicago, Chicago, Bears. Chicago Bears. Vince Lombardi. Green Bay, Packers. Green Bay Packers. What about politics? The Bay of Pigs. Cuba. Cuba. Kennedy, Castro, yes, you got it. How about this one? Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. President Reagan. Ronald Reagan, you got it. Let's switch to TVs and movies. You ready? Go ahead, make my day. Dirty Harry. Dirty Harry, Clint Eastwood. How about this? Toto? I have a feeling we're not in Kansas anymore. The Wizard of Oz. The Wizard of Oz. You got it. How about one more? A. Fonzie from Happy Days. Okay, an encore. Missed it by this much. Maxwell Smart. Maxwell Smart, you got it. These are, at least in our culture, legendary lines, legendary characters. And we've got a cross-section of people both here and then also watching at home. And most of you, I think, got all the references. If we did the same thing in other places, say China or India or Russia, do you think they'd recognize those legends? But this is something they would recognize. Around the world, the symbol of the cross proclaims the Christ who died and was raised. There may be cultures that try to deny it, try to hide it, try to take away the cross of Jesus Christ, but they will never win. The cross of Jesus will prevail. The cross will prevail. The message of salvation through faith in Jesus Christ will prevail because everyone needs the forgiveness that Jesus has won for us. Every culture, every person, every man, every woman, every child needs the Savior, whether they know it or not. Your neighbor needs the Savior. I need the Savior. You need the Savior. Ever since Adam and Eve sinned, a Savior was needed. God promised a Savior. He'd come through the seed of the woman. And centuries later, when everything was right, at God's timing, He proved faithful. The Savior came. 
A cry was heard in the night. The angel sang to the shepherds. The stars shone bright in the sky to proclaim the King of kings and Lord of lords. God promised a Savior and a Savior came. He lived to show us what was in God's heart. And he died on an accursed cross to let us know just how much he loves you. Jesus' death shows how far God is willing to go to bring you to himself. His death shows just how far God is willing to go to bring you into his family. The debt God himself demanded, God himself paid. The bloody sacrifice of the child of Bethlehem on a cross outside Jerusalem demonstrates the legendary faithfulness of our God. And so today, this first Sunday of Advent, we begin to prepare to celebrate the fulfillment of the promise of God. For Jesus came in fulfillment of the promise of God to Adam and Eve that he'd send a Savior. So as you prepare to celebrate Christmas, don't let the devil and the world hoodwink you into celebrating something that Christmas is not. Christmas is not about counting the cost of Christmas gifts given and received. It's not about making our lists and even checking them twice and giving gifts of coal or good gifts depending upon whether people were naughty or nice. Christmas is not about the debt we rack up in trying to create the next American Family video of excited children opening gifts or surprises of trips or exotic places or gift wrapping a smart car of Buick or a Lexus. Christmas is the celebration of God's faithfulness in sending a Savior. Shouldn't the coming of Jesus, the fulfillment of God's promise, be a planned focus of our celebration. Since it is Jesus' birth, shouldn't we spend the most? Shouldn't our largest investment at Christmas be the offering that we bring to him? And shouldn't this gift be planned and provided for before we make a mad dash for the others? Haven't we all let the world dictate how we celebrate the gift? of the Savior. You know, Advent is about Christmas. But Advent is also about another promise of God. It's about anticipating the physical return of Jesus to this planet. But this time he comes not as Savior, but as Judge. In today's Old Testament lesson from Isaiah, God's people were calling upon the judgment of God to fall upon the wicked. And his judgment did fall. It fell on Jesus when he faced the judgment of God on the cross for the sin of the world. It fell on Jesus and he cried out in anguish, my God, why? We know why. He was suffering for our faithlessness, for our failures. For our wrong priorities, for our thinking about God's promises too little, for the ways we limit God's ability to provide. But God is faithful. God keeps his promises. He promised a Savior, and a Savior has come. In addition, none of us has left the Thanksgiving table empty or hungry. Or have, had a, or have not had a place to celebrate the bounty that God has given us. None of us lack the forgiveness of God when we seek it. None of us need fear when a loved one of faith enters the grave. None of us need be concerned that God will abandon us in our time of need. These blessings and so, so many more are ours. Not by right, but by God's grace. The grace of a God who keeps his promises. The grace of God who is legendary for blessing his people. The grace of a God who came to this earth long ago and who, un and who is coming again at the end of time. The faithfulness of God. 
shown in a cradle, shown on a cross. And soon every eye will see him when he comes again in glory. Lord, keep us faithful until you come to take us home. Amen. And may the peace of God, which passes all of our human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in true faith in Christ Jesus. For he who calls us is faithful. Amen. Normally at this point in our service, we would be gathering the tithes and offerings of God's people, but during COVID, we do that differently. Uh, we're so thankful for your faithfulness in bringing tithes and offerings to the office, uh, either mailing them in or bringing them in during office hours. We turn to the prayer of the church. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the gift of peace and of pardon with all our hearts and with all our minds, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the Holy Christian Church here and scattered throughout the world, and for the proclamation of the gospel and the calling of all to faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this nation, for our cities and communities, and for the common welfare of us all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For seasonable weather and for the fruitfulness of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who labor, for those whose work is difficult or dangerous, and for all who travel, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all those in need, the hungry and the homeless, for the widowed and orphaned, and for all those in prison, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick and the dying, and for all those who care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, we thank you for your loving care of your people. Be with your servants and all whose first names we mention before you. O Lord, your servants, with the gifts of healing, when and where you know it is best, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, there are people we know among our family and friends who need to know you or know your love more clearly. Here are silent prayers for those whom we know among our family and friends whom we name in our hearts. Send the Holy Spirit to them to open their hearts to your loving grace and open our hearts and mouths to speak of our joy and trusting you as our Savior. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. And we pray for those who celebrate birthdays this week, including Linda Conrad and Sally Kramer, Emma Watson and Mylon Burdekis, and Nancy Miller. We, as we are your children, Lord, renew our faith in your forgiveness, your presence in our life, and our response of faithfully living as your child. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. Finally, for these and for all of our needs of body and soul, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Christ, Christ, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. By your own great power, O Lord, we pray that you come to protect us by your might from all evil and deliver and save us from our sins. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And blessed Lord, you have caused the Holy Scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and take them to heart that by the patience and comfort of your holy word we may embrace and ever hold fast to the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
when we join in the morning prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body, soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen.
coming of Jesus, both his first coming and Christmas, to celebrate the joys of our Savior born, but also looking forward to his coming again in glory to bring us and all the faithful home to be with him in heaven. May the Lord bless your walk with him this week.